1,500 additional Sugar Bowl tickets yesterday, now another 200 more. That's the announcement the University of Hawaii Athletics Department made today. KHNL News 8's Mariela David is live at UH Manoa with more on what this means for fans. Steph, it means that season ticket holders who were put on a waiting list on Wednesday may be able to go to the game after all. The 1,500 additional tickets UH received yesterday will go to everyone on the waiting list, and the 200 extra tickets on top of that will go to donors who've supported UH's sports program. Athletic Director Herman Frazier says they were able to get the 200 extra tickets from their friends in the sports world. We will continue our pursuit to uh, see if we can get additional tickets that are out there. Um, and, you know, we felt pretty good. I mean, everybody was in dire straits come last Tuesday or Wednesday, and I think we've come a long way since that particular time. UH was required to sell 17,500 Sugar Bowl tickets, but university leaders didn't think they could sell that many, so they only took 13,500. The rest went to Georgia, and that left some ticketless fans angry, so UH is now trying to make up for it. There is a chance that some people on the waiting list may have already gotten tickets through other means, and if that's the case, Frazier says that they will decide on Friday who to give those extra tickets to. Reporting live from the Stan Sheriff Ticket Office, Mariela Davis. David KHNL News 8. Alrighty, and get this. Bulldogs don't wear flowers to games, and we've never been called the rainbows. Well, those are fighting words to Hawaii Congressman Neil Abercrombie, whose Capitol Hill battles with a Georgia representative is escalating over those words and the upcoming Hawaii-Georgia Sugar Bowl matchup. In an open letter to the Warrior football team, the congressman blames the lack of respect for the Hawaii team on a flawed BCS system. And so he says he will author legislation aimed at changing that. He says many people on the mainland just don't fully comprehend what Ohana is about. And win or lose, the family bond and the spirit behind it will not be broken. As for his legislative dispute with the Georgia representative who said that about the flowers and the rainbow, well, if the Warriors win, Abercrombie gets a half a bushel of Georgia peaches. If they lose, he'll owe the Bulldog lawmaker a case of chocolate-covered macadamia nuts. I say he sends him a shirt with rainbows and flowers yeah. on it, too. <laughs> And you know, it is the most wonderful time of the year. It's not just the holiday season, also a great warrior football season. As Jason Tang tells us, the two go hand in hand. While the rest of the country celebrates the season with the colors of green and red, thanks to Colt Brennan and the Warrior football team, here in Hawaii, it's only about green. First time we made it to a bowl game in a long time, so I figure I support them as much as possible. Incredible season, nothing like I've ever seen before. Um, real proud to be from Hawaii, knowing that they got this far and are undefeated. So really proud of them. All those green shirts mean a lot more green backs for local dealers like Razor Concepts, who carry unique and edgy tees which support the Warriors. Once the, the streak kept on continuing and the hype kept on continuing as well, and you know the buildup definitely caused another reaction here because we couldn't supply it as much. And the supplies keep going as fast as new shirts come out, especially because of holiday gift shopping. We got a lot of people from the Outer Island that usually shop here because certain brands that they don't necessarily carry from the Outer Island. With uh, Hawaii's success now, even with the mainland, and uh, you know, some of the local people living in the mainland not really having these type of shirts available for them. It's been a good Christmas present, definitely. In less than three weeks, the Warriors will look to deliver the 50th state a great start to the new year as they face the Georgia Bulldogs in the Sugar Bowl. Jason Tang, KJNL News 8. And the Associated Press also releasing its All-America football teams today. Three local players making the cut, including Hawaii quarterback Colt Brennan, one of his main receivers, Devon Bess. They made it on to the third team. Brennan selected behind Heisman winner Tim Tebow and Missouri's Daniel Chase, who made the first and second teams respectively. On the other hand, Jordan Dazon, the 2004 grad of Waimea High, made it as a first teamer after a spectacular year as a linebacker with the Buffs of Colorado. And a reminder, we're gearing up to provide you some of the best and most complete coverage of the Warriors' greatest season ever. A number of specials airing right here on KHNL News 8 and our sister station, K5 the home team as we take you bowling in New Orleans. To the winners go the spoils, and today the Warrior football team received two more honors when the Associated Press All-America team was released. Fresh off his Heisman campaign, Hawaii quarterback Colt Brennan was selected to the third team. Colt's resume, undeniable as an All-American selection, over 4,000 passing yards, 44 combined touchdowns, and a perfect 12-0 season. 
Also making the Associated Press third team, wide receiver Devon Bess, the junior, called in 101 receptions, more than 1,200 yards receiving, and 12 TDs. Running. Local boy Jordan Dizon was also recognized by the AP, the six foot. 220-pound senior from Colorado earned first-team All-American honors as a linebacker. Dizon, a 2004 Waimea High grad, led the Buffalo with 160 tackles and was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Other notable All-Americans include Heisman Trophy winner Tim Tebow, who made the first team. Heisman finalist Chase Daniel made the second team. Heisman runner-up Darren McFadden was on the first. Defensive tackle Glenn Dorsey also on the first team. When you're a winner, you will get attention, and there's arguably no hotter coach in college football than Hawaii's own June Jones. And in an article released last weekend by the LA Daily News, the paper claimed that Coach Jones was a candidate for the UCLA job. Yesterday, Coach Jones told the Honolulu Advertiser that the LA-based article was, quote, an absolute lie. Today, we spoke with Hawaii Athletic Director Herman Frazier about whether he had been contacted by UCLA in regards to Jones. What normally happens whenever uh, someone in this business wants to talk to your football coach, uh, they will give you a call. If they would have contacted June, they would have called me. June Jones is an excellent football coach, um, and I think when you have somebody who's pretty darn good like he is, you're always going to have interest, um, and you can't stop that. Uh, I think a perfect example of that is uh, last year, uh, Chris Peterson at Boise State signed a brand new contract uh, after he had his uh, wonderful win in the Fiesta Bowl and next thing you know he's on UCLA's list so that's always going to happen that's just the nature of our business. Under Jones, the Warriors have compiled a 76-40 record, including an undefeated season this year. The Warriors have won four bowl wins and, of course, will play in January 1st. Sugar Bowl, the three-time WAC Coach of the Year, is in the final year of, his, of, of a five-year contract.